come into the temple, and it represents how sin keeps us from the presence of God. And we see that in verse 5, he says that, two, first of all, two birds were to be taken. One was to be killed over running water. In other words, the blood of that bird was to be mixed with water. And then a living bird was to be taken with a piece of cedar, which is a type of wood, hyssop, which was a type of, um, it was a type of branch or uh, that, that um, it, it, it kind of looked like an herb. And it would be tied together in bundles and it would be together with scarlet dipped inside of the water and blood mixture and sprinkled on that person. And then after that was done, the bird was to be set free. Now, you, 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 you read this, you're like, man, there's so many specific details about this. What does all this mean? This is kind of strange. Why are they taking all these uh, complicated steps? Why did God order this? And one of the things, brothers and sisters, that we have to understand about the scripture is that there is a purpose to everything. When God speaks, when God said something, he doesn't say it just to say it. He's not trying to be weird. He's not trying to do something uh, just to um, make it things complicated for the priests. But there is a specific message that is in everything that God is saying here. And what's, what's something interesting about the book of Leviticus is that it's a book that was directly given from the mouth of God to Moses. These are instructions that God is giving to Moses. Every element of this ritual points to Jesus Christ. Every element here points to the work that was going to be done at the cross, that it points to the gospel of Jesus Christ. First of all, he was supposed to take one bird, and that bird was supposed to be killed, and its blood mixed with water. We learn in the book of John, chapter 19, verse 34, that when Jesus was killed at his death, when his, he was pierced on the side, that that water and blood poured out of his side. And the Bible says, and, and if you read uh, verse 35, he, he, John speaks that that testifies of something. It was a sign that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, the Lamb of God that was to be cleansing. Look, look at what he says, John 19, 34 and 35. He says, But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately, blutter, uh, and immediately blood and water came out. And look at what he says in verse 35. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe. Immediately after he speaks about the water and the blood, he says, that this is a testimony. Or well, a testimony of what? This is a sign to us that Jesus was the Messiah. Now back to the Old Testament ritual. After that bird was killed over with the blood mixed with the running water, with the water inside the vessel, then the live bird, because there was two birds, a live bird would be taken and dipped into the blood and water mixture along with cedar. Now, cedar is a type of wood. Why would God want a wood, piece of wood dipped inside of that water and blood mixture? Well, I believe the reason why that wood was to be mixed, was to be to put together with the live bird into that blood and water mixture because Jesus was crucified on a cross of wood. Jesus was crucified on a tree, the scripture says, on a piece of wood. The scriptures prophesied that he would be crucified. That he would take upon himself the curse of the law. Because the Bible says, curse is anyone that is hung on a tree. Jesus was crucified on the cross. And that's why he, uh, God says here that that bird was to be dipped in that blood and water mixture along with a piece of cedar. It's a sign of the cross. It was also to be dipped with scarlet. 
The Bible shows us that scarlet is a symbol of sin. Isaiah 1.18 says this, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they, red, though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. This, the reason why God was having that scarlet to be dipped in that blood and water mixture was to represent the cleansing of our sin. That Jesus took upon himself our sin. Jesus didn't just die just to die. He didn't die. He wasn't he, he didn't die because he was a rebel to the Jewish leaders. He died for our sins in our place. That is imperative to the gospel. He died for a purpose, for my sin and for your sin. So the back to that ritual in the book of Leviticus, this live bird, a piece of cedar, a piece of scarlet, and hyssop was to be dipped inside of that blood and water mixture. What is hyssop? Hyssop is a specific plant that I believe represents cleansing. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 22, God tells Moses to get hyssop and to use that to dip it inside the blood of the lamb and to put it on the doors of the Israelites so that when the angel of death would pass by, it would pass over their houses. And he specifically told them that to dip hyssop into the blood and pour it on the houses. In Psalms 51, 7, the psalmist says to God, God, clean, clean me with hyssop and I shall be clean. This represents the cleansing that we receive when we are receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then after that whole ritual, after that bird was killed, his blood was mixed with water, and then a live bird was mixed into that blood and water mixture with cedar, scarlet, and hyssop, then that bird was to be set free, which I believe speaks of the resurrection because the gospel is not complete without the resurrection the resurrection is essential to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reason why it is essential because it represents that Jesus finished. It is a symbol that God accepted what Jesus had sacrificed unto the Father for our sins and that he had overcome death. And I believe all these things are connected with what John is saying here. And I believe that Hebrews chapter 9, verse 19, confirms this. Look at what Hebrews chapter 9, verse 19 says. And if you compare this to what Leviticus 14, 1 through 7 says. Look at what Hebrews 9, 19. Compare Hebrews 9, 19 with Leviticus 14, 1 through 7. Look what the scripture says in Hebrew 9, 19. It says, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission. Therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most highly place every year with blood of another. He then would have to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once and the, at the end of ages, he has appeared to put away sin, by the sacrifice of himself. What I believe John is saying 
when he's speaking about the water and the blood, is that Christ, Jesus, the Son of God, sent by God, is the ultimate sacrifice for all sin and was made witness by the Holy Spirit because he rose from the grave and that he is both man and God, both man and deity, as the scriptures foretell. Amen. You know, one of the things that I love, brother, is how descriptive John is. For me, he paints a canvas that could, you know, it, 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 it's really beautiful. And let me try to explain what I see in the scripture. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. To be able to understand this, because there's something very profound, water and blood. I want to be able to, I want you to go with me to a scripture. And this is found in the book of John 7, 37 through 38. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures had said, rivers of living water will flow from them. What is rivers of living water and what does it represent? This is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So here we're talking about the Holy Spirit and blood. But what does blood have to do with the Holy Spirit? Let's take a look at another verse. This is found in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. And this is what the Word of God says. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your sin, for your souls. For it is by the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Who was the atonement for us? Jesus. So the blood is a representation of Jesus. Now let's go to Hebrews thirteen twelve, whereof Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. What is our brother John trying to describe in this verse? with the water and the blood. And in order to put this in perspective, we need to read a little bit more. And it is the Spirit who testifies. Brother Javer just spoke about something just a few minutes ago, and he said, when John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, who was there to testify about this? It was God. Now watch this. Because the Spirit is the truth. Who is the Spirit? The Bible refers to the Spirit as being God. For there are three that testify. The Spirit being God, the water being the Holy Spirit, and the blood being the Son. And the three are in agreement. What this scripture here is talking about, brothers and sisters, is the Trinity. It's talking about that we need to believe in Jesus Christ and the Father 
and the Son. And this is such an amazing thing, the way he goes.